Hey again, welcome to the Age Changer Show brought to you by Summit Life Ministries. Our mission at Summit Life Ministries is to elevate, equip, and empower. Elevate the church's vision for us as believers to see our identity through God's eternal purpose. Equip believers to live with an eternal perspective and empower believers to live supernatural lifestyles in faith-filled obedience. Well, we're doing it. You're doing it, we're doing it. I like to start that way. I also wanna encourage you. Um, we have been having a great week talking about this great divide and you talked to me yesterday about Jesus came to bring fire or to send fire on the earth and that fire is a clarifier, a dividing fire, a um, cleansing fire and we talk about Jesus wanting unity but before there can be true unity um, in justice and truth and righteousness there usually has to be a dividing and a fire that will bring clarity and um, expose things that need to be dealt with and or removed that's right so that there can be true unity that is correct and what we have been talking about this week is we kind of interrupted the series that we we're on those of you that haven't uh, joined us in any of the other episodes I encourage you to go back a couple days mm -hmm. and listen to the mm -hmm. whole thing but we've been talking about learning the ways of God mm -hmm. so that we can actually discern our times and then be a people that spiritually not just try to survive these times but uh, thrive and overcome cooperate with the grace of God understanding our role and our purpose in these unique times and moments but the only way that you're going to know the ways of God is by seeing how God has worked yes. and we we have just talked about so many people are just reactionary by events and moments that they're disturbed they're you know what Paul described in Ephesians chapter 4 he said don't be like a child that is moved by every wind and wave of doctrine. Mm -hmm. Do not be a believer in these turbulent times that just by one event or by the next event or the uh, next election cycle or by this news report or right. what's what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you be moved and, and allow your, your emotions and the state of your heart to be unsettled by what you see and hear in these moments that we're walking through where this is an unsettling time it's a it's a time of disruption it is a dividing time and that's the message that i want to in these episodes communicate if you think that god is trying to make everything better for america for us to live you know our little ideal of what we think about the American dream coming true. This is not that season in the United States. This is going to be a time that is going to be comparable mm -hmm. to the days of that led up to Abraham Lincoln coming to power and then the days that followed his inauguration which led to great disruption, civil strife, civil conflict, a great, divide. Uh, a great divide in our country. So Abraham Lincoln was this lightning rod and, and this man, when God placed him in that place of power, mm -hmm. there was, he, he was a divider and a clarifier mm -hmm. and it brought great division. Four years of tremendous division mm -hmm where thousands, hundreds of thousands of people died mm -hmm. uh, fighting over people's rights and demanding their way on this issue of just complete injustice in regards to the, the, the viewpoint that people could be owned as property. And it was an issue that wasn't just a, an American issue. It was a, an issue that... Of justice. Of justice in the Divine kingdom. Divine... Justice. Yes, divine. It was not just a natural thing. It's a spiritual principle. It wasn't just a natural, you know, this is yours, this is mine. This is something deeper. It was a deeper issue. You know, Carmen, I referred uh, in another episode how that Jesus reigns and he's seated at the right hand of his father mm -hmm. with a promise that all of his enemies are going to become That's his right. footstool. 
people being owned as property was an enemy that Jesus said, I'm going to bring it and, and I'm going to make it bow. That's good. That, that ideology, that opinion that we can traffic in the souls of men. That, that descriptor right there is found in Revel the book of Revelation uh, talking about the city, the spiritual city of Babylon that embodies, you know, a city that is filled with spiritual pollution. Mm -hmm. It talks about how Babylon is the hold of, of foul and unclean spirits and the, 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 the city traffics in the souls of men. When we talk about human trafficking, human slavery, that's an issue not of just political justice, yeah. of a, you know, a, a country in their government trying to make wrong things right. When, when you're engaged in that activity, you're, you're, coming, you're coming against the Lord Himself. Yes. You are fighting against God. Yeah. And so America put itself in, in, a, in a place where there was going to be this moment where God was going to come in and intervene into the life cycle of our country and saying, this is a wrong that I am going to make right because you gave birth to this nation with truth saying that all men were created equal. How can you say all men are created equal when you don't treat everyone equally? So, we are in a cycle where history is repeating itself. Right. And just as Abraham Lincoln was a great divider that brought clarity so that a reunification could occur, mm -hmm. but justice could come right. for some of the inhabitants of the American nation. Now, Donald Trump yeah. has also been raised up to be a sign. And he is a great, he's brought a great division yeah. that has brought clarity concerning certain issues of truth and justice. And, and this is where I'm going to be very prophetic. Just as Abraham Lincoln dealt with the issue of slavery, the issue that is going to be, the sign is not the substance. It points mm -hmm. to the issue that reveals the hearts of men. And the issue that is going to be the issue of justice that God is going to bring clarity and conviction to our country is the issue of abortion. Yes, it is. So, in, in many ways, Abraham Lincoln, which is now memorialized as one of the right. greatest founders and presidents of our country, if you would have if we could travel back in time and see what this man was in his times, he was not appreciated till after his death, That's right. after his demise, after he passed off the scene. Now we have a big Lincoln Memorial to where whenever there is any type of march for justice or a cry for justice, everybody wants that as the backdrop for their march or to voice uh, and, and cry out against any type of injustice. Mm -hmm. There was an entire part of our country that hated him, mm -hmm. viewed him as a despot, viewed him as, as someone that was a violator of their rights, a suppressor to, of their rights. Was trying to destroy our country. Was trying to destroy yeah. our country. I mean, they lampooned him, characterized him. Uh, they, they tried to kill him multiple times and even succeeded in their assassination attempt uh, at the end. Uh, but we need to understand Donald Trump is the exact type of sign of the great divide. He's an indicator that if we think that by electing another president who is not a lightning rod like Donald Trump who says things that, that triggers many, many people. <laughs> We haven't seen anything. He is the sign, really, the great divide is coming. Yeah. He's just an indicator of that which is coming. Because the sign was about bringing disruption, and it was about the revealing of the American heart. A warning to even the church's heart. A warning to 
not only the American nation, but the nation within the nation, the church. Mm -hmm. And so in many ways, Donald Trump as a, as a very secular human being that has not been raised in church, has not walked with Christ, he has not uh, epitomized a Christ-like character and nature. He has been more of a truth speaker and a, 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 a confronter than really the voice, the prophetic voice that the church should have been to a wayward nation. Mm, but when the church didn't do its job. job. Yeah. And I, I was listening to, to a brother the other day that, you know, really brought conviction to me. And, and he said that when we think about God confronting us, you know, we want people that have certain, you know, attributes about them. So because we have mi mischaracterized the character of Christ yeah. and, and we have sanitized Jesus in such a way that we, we have this picture of him where Jesus is only a soft, wimpy, right. Jesus that had really no no strength, uh, you know he was he was very feminine, namby pamby, wimpy, <laughs> mamby pamby. But we read in the episode yesterday yeah. how he said, "I've come to burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> I I've come to set a fire that you're not going to be able to put out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to burn out some evil. I I'm going to go." To the roots of injustice and hypocrisy and i'm going to burn it out i'm going to expose it and i'm going to clarify because i'm going to bring purity back to the people of god okay. well most of us would be offended by prophets old testament prophets Agreed. because we we were reading in the book of ezekiel in ezekiel's call uh, this last week and god said about ezekiel he said I'm calling you to a stubborn and a rebellion people. And he said, I'm going to make your forehead like flint. In other words, you're going to knock heads. And your hit back on their hard-headedness. Your hard-headedness is going to be harder. And your hit back to them mm -hmm. is going to be harder than their hard-heartedness and right. hard-headedness. So when Donald Trump has been this political counterpuncher and he's been tweeting and he's been punching back and he says things that literally as a, a, a guy who has been in Christian ministry and pastoral ministry, I just kind of on the inside go, oh, that, oh, oh that, that, that hurts. I bet you they've never been called that name before. But yet the very things that they accuse him of they have done themselves. And that's why I want to say, this is about the exposing of hearts. This is about exposing hypocrisy at its worst. Because it's amazing how they can treat him. They can, you know, they can, at the, I, I'll never forget this comedian at the beginning of his um, presidency, how she took, had, had this so uh, photographer take a picture of him with a, you know, a facsimile of his head holding it uh, as a beheaded individual. And, you know, this comic was trying to make her, her political statement. And they said that Donald Trump's son, Barron, saw that. And because he's autistic, uh, he could not separate whether yeah, this was something that actually happened to his dad. So he was traumatized by seeing this photo. Of, his, of this depiction of his dad's beheading. He couldn't separate, have they actually done this to my dad? Is this real or, or is it a photograph? Never, and, and I wanna say this, never has a president except Lincoln mm -hmm. been treated the way Donald Trump has been treated. And I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, the way this man has been treated, revealed, not who he is, mm -hmm. 
because God made him to be this street fighter, mm -hmm. New Yorker, that, that his head is harder than your head. And that's why you're offended at him when he exposes who you are. Mm -hmm. I hope you heard what I said. If he has offended you, it's been to reveal your heart. He is, he is, God, God is using him to test your heart to reveal something about you. And so if what came out of you was to attack him and to hate on him, even though he was the president of the United States, mm -hmm. and to seek his demise and his assassination or, or his destruction, mm -hmm. then I want you to know, you didn't rise when you did that. You actually fell. Mm -hmm. Because he is for the rising and falling of many. So after Lincoln's presidency and after the Civil War, there were many, many great men, mm -hmm. American icons, mm -hmm. that chose a loyalty to what they knew and what they had known instead of choosing truth and justice. Mm -hmm. They could have been great Americans. They could forever be known, not as traitors, rebels. They could have been known as forging a future of American America after slavery, but chose to fight for a cause that U U Ulysses Simpson Grant, you know, General Grant, said, never has people fought for something so tenaciously, but was the worst cause that could ever have been fought for. That is so true. And abortion is going to be the same thing. People are going to fight mm -hmm. for the murder of, of children. Babies. The murder of infants. And they have fought for it. It's so sad. Demanding, it's so horrible. Yeah, demanding their own selfish rights instead of standing for the cause of truth and justice. Now we're going to end there today. No, uh, I want to say... God sees and He knows. And, and it reminds me of the Psalms that say, God doesn't see, God doesn't know, He doesn't see. There's no, there's nothing that, he's, there's no God that's seeing what we're doing, but there is a God and He sees and He knows and He will bring justice because that's His word and that's based on who He is and that's truth. So Jonathan Kahn has popularized a word in the Christian church because he wrote a book called The Harbinger. Right. Donald Trump, is a harbinger because right now there is this great divide that you see in the election that we just went through it shows that we are in a valley of decision mm -hmm. but he's a harbinger that points to a greater division that's coming now I want to read one last scripture because you you gave I me permission you gave me permission <laughs> to go on a little further I want us to look at Matthew chapter 10 verse 34 he said, do not think, so he said, I've come to bring a fire. Here is another statement of Jesus, the great divider. Before he brings union, he has to bring clarification. He said, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I'm going to do a divine work of surgery. He says, for I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And then he says this, a person's enemies will be of those family. of his own household. So we need to, to understand as we have to take a stand, which is what the division is about. You may not want to, because um, you don't like conflict. You don't. You you want to somehow. Uh, why can't we all get along, okay. sing kumbaya together? This is gonna. And I wasn't trying to be funny, but it is funny in a little way. Uh, that is not this time and season. We cannot compromise. Compromise. I define it as one's ability to, that tries to exist and survive, but really not thrive and overcome. Mm -hmm. You cannot negotiate truth 
-hmm. You cannot ne negotiate justice away. This is a moment where God says the, 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 the blood of the innocent cries out to me. And our iniquity, the cup of our iniquity in America is full. And now God is going to tread the wine press of his justice. His truth is going to march on and through our country. It's going to be a, a, a rebirth of our nation, but we're going to have to go through a deep, dark valley. And uh, Donald Trump was the sign that was the arbinger showing where we're, we're preparing to go in the great divide you must make the right decision. So if you're a part of the body of Christ, you want to be on God's side. You want to be on the side of truth. Abraham Lincoln, I'm going to go back to the yeah. well of history. The they said, you know, do you pray that God is on our side? He said, no, I'm praying that I, we're on God's side. And, and I pray that we will make clear decisions with the great clarity and conviction to where we will be on God's side, on his side of history, his story mm -hmm. for his glory. Bless you guys. I know that's heavy and weighty, but we must discern our times and walk in his ways. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Um, I hope that this is causing you to be stirred to pray. Um, if you need to see more, want to see more, you can check us out at summitlifeministries.com. If you have any questions or points or particularly questions if you want us to dive into something please put those in the comments so we can address those we try to do that every week god bless you go with god keep your eyes fixed and love the truth he is the way the truth and the life love jesus keep your eyes on him and i'm going to make just a short statement you know there's so much content that i want to unpack on this because i want to make application for the church because there's a great civil war and a great divide that's going to go on in the church as well. And so we're probably going to continue on this I theme so. next week uh, because I want to bring real life application for the church. And we can see the dealings of God of where the church is at right now as well. Love you guys. Bless Love you. you.